Tonight's episode of the 31st Lap Podcast is brought to you by DirtTrackDigest.com. If it's on dirt, it's on Dirt Track Digest. This is the 31st Lap Podcast, recorded live in the studios of FingerLakes1.com in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now, your host, Chris Markwar. Good evening, everybody. Episode number 171 of the 31st Lap on deck. Lee Sanders is joining us here in studio. I want to say hi to him real quick and say welcome to the show again. Welcome back. Congratulations on the win. Lee Sanders picking up a 305 Sprint Division win over at the Land of Legends here over the weekend. We had Lee in the studio uh, a little bit earlier uh, as we worked into the, the preseason portion of the Northeast uh, racing action. We talked a little bit about his goals for the year and where we wanted to end up, and he's been creeping into the top five little bit by little bit and, and finally uh, broke through on uh, on a red-eye night over at Canandaigua after you got to run uh, in the vintage sprint car division over at Williams Grove. So uh, let's let's kind of just jump right into this, then we'll do a little bit of results and uh, and, and get into some of the other things that we talked about a little bit here as, uh, as, as we got ready to get the show going. Um, I, I, I Most importantly... Your uh, your land speed record is still intact. Land speed record still <laughs> intact. Yeah, the last time we were out there, uh, I bumped it up about two mile an hour. Um, got that recorded in, and then the owner actually got in the car and we pushed him off, and he beat me by a tenth of a mile. But uh, they had uh, they never hit start basically. They, they had technical <laughs> difficulties with the timing, so he never did get the record, and I still have it. So we're gonna go back out at the end of September and and few it again and see who comes home with it <laughs> and and parlaying a uh, uh a great run at canandaigua here a couple weeks ago now and do a win over the weekend how nice is that to, to break through your first win dating back to the, when you're running street stocks yeah i was canandaigua. i was beginning to wonder we're running out of time here at the end of the season and i, I knew we had it in us i just didn't think we were going to have enough time to get it done <laughs> Um, but we had a good night last weekend. How tough is that division over there? I mean, when this thing got started, the 305s, it was supposed to be an economical entry-level division for, for somebody who wanted to jump in and say that they ran a, a full-size sprint car with a, a 305 engine in it. And now you guys are all running. Uh, uh, you're running alcohol, and you have all new components on it. You've got brand-new cars yeah. coming into it, and the engine technology that you've got is turning out more horsepower than when you were running with ESS in the 360s. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, it's turned into way more than what the class was designed for, at least at Canadagua. And, and back a couple of years ago, I had actually told French that, you know, once they come up to the East Coast here, we'd ruin it on them. But, uh, French yeah. Grimes, of course, he's the guy that you're referencing yeah, he, there from down in Virginia. He was the innovator of that 305 Race Saver division. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we were discussing the other night that back when I was running the tour with ESS, the 360 motors we had, uh, we're putting out as much horsepower with these 305s now. Of course, the 360s have also evolved too, so they're sure. putting out more than we are. But, but uh, the class is unbelievable, and we at least at least everything still costs the same, right? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. the price goes up, the purse goes down. That's the history of racing. But the, but the, yeah, we've got six or eight cars that could win any given night. And actually, right. I think we figured out they've had nine different winners this year at Canada. Oh wow, Agua, so that's not bad at all. Yeah, I mean it's been real competitive. Daryl Ruggles leading the points still. Over there at Kennedy Motorsports Park, uh, regular threat time and time again. He's a guy that you chased across the line a couple times here this year. Uh, his luck has taken a turn. So mathematically, there's still some ebb and flow uh, in terms of that top spot. And that's got to play out over, I think you've got two more weeks there, the regular season, and yeah. then and then the season finale, which is double points. Right, you're right. we got one regular week and a double points week. And, and I'm sure Daryl's going to do everything he could do to – to keep that lead but uh <laughs> he's got a couple guys that are hot on his tail well uh nick cooper nick cooper and dave ferguson yeah they both had a, a a really good year and dave ferguson's had a a couple of bad weeks where he's wrecked some equipment and so he's he's struggling along but he's not going to give up easy either and john preston he's always a fun kid to watch yeah, jo john's always fast he's a he likes to run the high side and right on the gas <laughs> and then some of the some of the cars that have come into the division from regular ESS action. You've got Charlie Donk and Paul Haybeck. Yeah, Paul Haybeck and Charlie, they both got, you know, top of the latch equipment. And and uh, Charlie's been knocking on the door for the last few weeks, too. He's kind of in the same shoes we are. 
It'd be neat for that division to see a 10th different winner before you're done. Yep. Yeah, it's possible. 10th or 11th. Yeah, for that matter. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you got two more weeks in it. Yeah. But um, so everything's going good at the Napa store. Things are things are rolling there. Yeah, it made the comment about uh, back in the day, they always said that you should win races on Sunday and you sell parts on Monday. And it is really kind of true this week. We've had a phenomenal <laughs> week going with the people calling, people stopping in. And, of course, I don't let them out the door unless they buy something. Right. <laughs> Lock it behind them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over at Canandaigua on Saturday, uh, they had a full program over there. Um Let's take a look at who won. Matt Shepard, it picked up his 10th win of the year over at Canandaigua in the modified division that also stands as the 50th of his career. He took the lead on lap 22, held off Tim Fuller. His first modified win was posted in May 2003, so it didn't take him long to pile up 50 wins over there at the Land of Legends. Kevin Ridley winning the Sportsman feature over Rob Bussey, Paul Guerrero, giving chase there. We talked about Lee and his win. Charlie Donk was chasing him with uh, uh, Bob Destry. Chasing him at the line. Mike Welch winning over Mike Manudolo, Vance Vanderwall, Eric Chapman winning another in the pure stock division over there at Canada. We'll also on Saturday over at Fulton, Jimmy Feltz coming away with a win in the feature. It's the second of the year. Billy Decker was next in line, and that adds to his points lead. King Smash from Crash from Demolition Derbies has an event over there at Fulton coming up this Saturday. Also, uh, a Swigo note, uh, Cody Graham did it again. Uh, last year, he won on the final Super Modified feature. Uh, right before the week off leading into uh, Budweiser International Classic Weekend. He did it again over there, uh, winning the 50-lap event that is going to most likely go in the books as the fastest super modified feature ever contested. He did it uh, 50 laps in just under 15 minutes. That's an average speed at just a tick under 130 miles per hour. So he's certainly hauling the mail, and that gives him all kinds of momentum going into Budweiser International Classic, which is set for... Not this weekend, but next weekend. And uh, that's going to be a ton of fun to watch. Anthony Lacerdo sweeping the small block Super Twin 20s uh, for Cody. It was his first win since uh, first of 2015, giving him four total for his career. On Friday over at Brewerton Speedway, Matt Hulsizer picked up his first win in a long time. His last win came in 2012. He uh, had to chase down and then pass Vic Coffey with 10 to go. And then Matt Shepard, due to a late restart, ended up on his back bumper, and he beat him to the line by about a quarter of a second there. Spencer had twin 25-lap modified features, and that uh, was a busy night for them over there. Kevin Timmerman winning the first, and he was happy to celebrate that win. His daughter making her second trip to the track, and uh, he got to celebrate that with her. In victory lane, Mike Lady winning the second. Kevin Hut Kyle Hutchinson, rather, winning the uh, NYPA midget feature. Timmy Catalano, the four-cylinders, and Van Grant in the Super Sixes. Side note for their program, kids' bike races have been changed to uh, coming up tomorrow, Friday night. They were originally scheduled uh, back in July, and due to rain out, that didn't happen. So, um Bicycle races on deck at Spencer over there on Friday night. Black Rock Speedway, Casey Pavlik picked up his fourth Crate Sportsman win of the year. That locks up the division point title for him. He had uh, Dale Walty and Stacey Jackson biting on his bumper at the line. Alan Johnson picked up his third win of the year at Black Rock, and he was followed by Tyler Seary and Steve Payne. Corey Costa, last week's winner, Brady Fultz, filled the top five. Keith Lamphere winning an impressive eighth IMCA win over Jason Benjamin and Brad Smith. C.J. Guerrero winning his first in the street stock division. Gene Ballmer, who was uh, already got two or maybe three wins over there, was knocking on the door uh, at the line. Jason Smart officially going to go into the books as the winner of the four-cylinder feature. His win was in question when they looked at uh, engine component infraction, and you know, while the initial press release from the track said that it was uh, – it was a DQ. The wind was actually put on hold, and following some more uh, more motor tests and, and uh, inspection, I guess is the fair way to say it, track officials deemed that the wind would stand well after 10 o'clock on Monday night is when Jason got that phone call. So going in the books with the wind, Jason Smart does have the wind, and uh, J therefore Rich Sarpstein and Joe Pavosky both back down into the second and third spots. Jeff Doherty in the youth division winning his 14th of the year over at Black Rock. Brett Hearn picking up a win at Cornwall on Sunday night with the Super Dirt Car Series. He uh, jumped out of line from a single-file restart after John Danny Johnson spun late, late in the going. And at that point, he ran down Kerry Terrence. Cornwall's a really tight track, the 4 tenths mile. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to get up there, but, boy, that track yep. is, is tiny. And, and Kerry decided to roll the dice on it and ran a small block. 
Yeah, yeah. We used to run tour races up there, and it was always exciting up there. Yeah, tight corner, small track. He ran the small block, tried to keep the momentum up, and it didn't exactly pan out for him. He uh, he ended up giving up the top spot to Brett Hearn. He held for second. Matt Shepard was third. Kyle Dingwall, Pat Ward filling the top five. The win goes in the books as number 120 for Brett Hearn on the Super Dirt Car Series alone, hmm. which is pretty impressive by itself, and it capped a weekend sweep for him. He won at Albany, Saratoga, and Lebanon Valley, and uh, the Mr. Dirt Valley, or excuse me, Mr. Dirt Car USA event was this weekend, and... Uh, the Earl Halliquist Memorial was also this weekend. Rolling Wheels um, is added a tour event for Empire Super Sprints on the 9th of October. Uh, it's a non-points race. It's like one of those challenge races they always used to have there in the fall. So you'll see a ton of 360 action over there. 3,000 to win October 9th. And the Brewerton event for Empire Super Sprints has been rescheduled to uh, September the 4th. Uh, you going to get over there? See if you can match wits with any of the uh, 360s at Rolling Wheels. I'm sure it's an easy task, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> probably not with our car. I mean, I, I don't like to take a knife to a gunfight, but uh, we might get down there and watch and, and uh, hook up with a couple guys. And I don't know, down the road it's a possibility we might do some 360 shows maybe next year or the year after. Yeah. Pulling up some stuff here. Stu Friesen, of course, he... Uh, he does okay when it comes to modified racing. He won the Mr. Dirt Track USA uh, event over at Lebanon Valley on Tuesday night this week. And I forgot that they had, after I even talked with Mike about this uh, through the course of the week when we were trying to get everything together and figure out who was going to land where, he's got his fo fantasy football draft tonight. So that's why Mike wasn't able to be here. Mm -hmm. And Matt Tanner was the guy who came away with the win in the, uh, the Earl Halliquist Memorial over at I-88. We talked a little bit about Alan Johnson here a moment ago. He is going to be back at Syracuse again. I don't know if you've been following any of this, but the guy's ageless. He's been doing this forever, and he's got a, a ride banked. He's going to be um, uh, he's going to be driving the Helmar International entry over at Syracuse. He's won, the sh he's won the race in 83, 89, and then he came back through and won it again in 2003. And he's got a pretty decent combination to uh, to try his luck here this year. It'd be neat to see. Yeah, he was one of my favorite drivers back when I was a kid, and probably one of the reasons that I started racing was watching him. <laughs> it was quite, a, quite an influence. He's done some amazing things. It's going to be a TO Pro car, Kevin Enders Power Plants under the hood, and uh, William Mock Moody. Obviously, he's excited to have somebody like Alan Johnson in the car. You can't argue yeah. with that at all. That's... Uh, Inter interesting to follow uh, race pro weekly breaking the news on that one and have you followed it, any of this stuff with the uh the wrongful death lawsuit tied with tony stewart not too closely because i'm you know i don't agree with the whole thing um i i, I honestly hope they don't get anywhere with the thing I, I i'm a little upset with what the family's putting stewart through um Never was a big Stewart fan, but nobody deserves to go through what they've put him through with that that whole scenario. It's it's not good. So at this point, um, the ruling has come out that, uh, that, that this now is going to move uh, from New York State courts to the federal courts, yeah. and it it it's got it's got bad written all over it. I mean, at one point we we thought that there might even be some indictments against Tony Stewart. The grand jury says no, we're not going to do that, and and then this uh, comes just a, it was just a matter of days before the one-year anniversary of Kevin Ward's passing. Uh, one of the things that was cited in there was that Stewart could have easily acted reasonably and with prudence to avoid striking Ward, just as all of the drivers had done as they passed Ward during the uh, during the yellow flag. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's it. I got mixed yeah. feelings on it as a whole. Well, I don't know if it's something that we really need to. Uh, we don't really need to badger the thing front to back, but I'm. Um, mm. Man, <laughs> I, I, you know, I was there that night, and I wasn't too far from the scene when it happened. And you know, it, my take on the whole thing was the very first thing that went wrong was Kevin got out of the car. And that, but that's but it, that's racers' code. Yeah, the, yeah. And, and I've chewed a couple other guys out for doing it too. <laughs> I mean, you know, you keep your butt in the car until somebody gets there and tells you it's safe. You know, but he got out of the car, and that changed his fate. And anything that happened after that, I mean. Those guys, the last thing you're looking at is for somebody to be walking across the track while you're you're out there. And, of course, the caution had come out, so you're looking for cars. You're not looking for people. Right. And uh, it just, just was a whole unfortunate scenario. And 
and I wish they'd just put it to rest and let it go. But uh, you know, well, it's gonna get it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better now yeah. because we're gonna bring out all sorts of toxicology reports and and it's gonna there's gonna be yeah yeah there's gonna be a lot of mud thrown yeah you know before before we get to uh, get to a resolution on that and um, uh, some more unfortunate news of the untimely passing of Sean Lias, regular in the IMCA ranks. Uh, we've got the news of that that, that he had. Uh, Passed away somewhat unexpectedly. Our condolences out to Sean and 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 his family. Um, guy that you know everybody knew when it came to IMCA is you knew that logo Elias Tire, mm. you know. And uh, so that's that's uh, unfortunate to learn of. Um, but uh, you know, best wishes with the family there. Let's bring it back around to some some lighter stuff and, and talk a little bit more about this win over at, at, at Canandaigua. Take us through what that race was like. I mean, the last time you did this, you were in a street stock, probably a little yeah, bit different perspective. Yeah. Well, you know, all year long, we've kind of been stuck starting 6th, 7th, 8th back there, and, you know, that just seems to be where our handicapping has is, is stuck us, you know. So I, I actually started 8th Saturday night, and, and uh, right from the get-go, the car started to feel good and uh was sticking through the corners and i could run where i like to run and and uh yeah, about halfway through the race i had gotten underneath daryl and a couple of the other guys and i thought if i could get in and get by him then then we'd be golden and actually daryl got tangled up in a wreck that took four of them out mm. uh, which put me right tight on the back bumper of, of dresky and and doc so when the restart came down it was i guess it was quite the battle when <laughs> up to the end i guess it was pretty close <laughs> <laughs> so you weren't you weren't watching that i was i could <laughs> i could see charlie's car up here on the high side and i i knew if i could get underneath them that he'd probably overdrive the thing into the court or try to get back by <laughs> and, and i think that's what happened you know is it tough to see out of a sprint car especially the right side you know you, you can see movement up there but you you can't really you know his car's white so it kind of stuck out and i could see the nose in there a little bit you know so you rely mostly on what you can hear in terms of a car being out well, there? Yeah, what you can hear and you can see, you know, probably from the Nerf bar down the tires, you know, when you're looking out that corner. And with our containment seats and the helmets we wear today, the, the vision's very limited on that side. Interesting. Interesting giving some of the arguments that have come up in Tony Stewart's case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but it was it was a well-deserved win for the crew. I mean, they, they've they worked hard and our sponsors have worked hard and, and uh, I'm glad I could deliver. Was it tough him. to celebrate the win? I mean, coming off of this, so so you get in, you get back into New York I, I, at five o'clock Saturday yeah, morning. Yeah, I'd have <laughs> liked to really partied it up, but I was just kind of whipped, and I wanted to go home and see my pillow. But because uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the night before we were down in Williams Grove, and I didn't get back till five o'clock Saturday morning, so I was I was pretty tired. And as I was walking around the pits earlier, everybody kept saying, "You look like a zombie today. You look like you're." <laughs> I'm like. So the key at this point, as we've learned, is to stay up all night long, and you're sure to win a race. Yeah, well, I told my wife, I <laughs> said, maybe we need to go to Pennsylvania and race more often, because maybe that gets me in the groove, and then we can come back home and get the job done. So, <laughs> But, you know, we, over those final couple laps, you see him up there, anything, do you start You start watching the tower, you know, the scoring pylon, and, and, and seeing who's back there, how many laps are left, you start hanging out of the wheel a little bit tighter? I, You know, the car felt so good. Mm -hmm. that I, I knew if I could just hit the hit my lines and not worry about anything else, I knew we had it covered. And the hardest thing is the, the groove that I was running was down low, and it's so easy to overdrive the corner going in. It took quite a bit of discipline to, to slow down, get the car in there so it was straight so I could have a good exit. And, and I guess it, the car was an absolute rocket coming off the corner, but it just it took – you had to slow down to get in there. Had you done anything different to the car? Not really. I mean, we've been working with a shock package from AFCO there that Mike Emhoff has worked out sure. for us. And we were playing around with that a little bit and trying different things. And then, uh, you know, three weeks ago, I threw something at the car just to see what it'd do, and all of a sudden it hit. Yeah. And uh, it, we've been golden since. You know, if I can keep it out of trouble, then... And we're right up front. You gonna dust off this Doug Wolfgang car and put the three oh five in it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That that Doug Wolfgang car is just it was an honor to sit in it. I don't think I'd change a thing. <laughs> That's got a like a three three twenty seven with an aluminum rod 
motor in it, you know, so that that's a pretty pretty beefy piece. So you you go down to Williams Grove on Friday and and sort of by accident end up driving a car that was built and designed by Doug Wolfgang in the vintage spring car division at Williams Grove. Yeah, the uh Bob Hemingway who owns the land speed car that I run purchased this car and uh it's actually a car that the Motter family who's got a lot of a rich history in racing down in Pennsylvania they had owned it Doug Wolfgang had built it and drove it for him and uh, he want he had taken it to Sealing's Grove and ran it and then he wanted to go to Williams Grove and we got down to Williams Grove and and uh he was a little bit intimidated I think and I think he wanted to see what the car would do and uh, he ended up telling me to get in the car and make sure the belts fit and and out we went and <laughs> You know, the first lap, I'm thinking, boy, I hope this thing goes left, and it, <laughs> it stuck. So we just kept going, and and uh, there were 16, 18 cars in that division that we ran, wow. and 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 it was kind of interesting. It's the first time I've ever been involved with it, and they just kind of spread everybody out evenly around the racetrack and tell you to go race and uh, just don't take nobody out if you can, right. you know try not to ruin some of this equipment. And uh, we had actually passed everybody and lapped all but two cars, I think. Wow! So it it was it was a it was quite the ride. It was an honor. I, I'm glad I got to do it. Have you ever gone around Williams Grove before? We've been down there many times, and I've never got to race there. Right. Uh, we've been at Sealings Grove and Port Royal and places like that, but sure. for some reason we've never been able to to make the Williams Grove thing work. And and uh, so I was excited. I mean, it's. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. What was it like going around that place? And with all the history? Just, and it, yep, just phenomenal, you know. And we sit in the pits, and, of course, I was in the modern car, and right next to me was a car that was owned by the Hamilton family that Keith Kaufman had driven, and um, Walt Dyer's car there, the Dyer masonry car there that uh, Lance DeWeese had driven, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there was a White Kirk car down there. And, I mean, there's just so much history that all that just starts playing back in your mind that, you know, it's just just phenomenal that I could be part of that. Is the history that, that that comes with those cars actually like like it's documented history? It's not like somebody found this old thing and painted up like it. These are actually the cars. No no different than when you look at the 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 Formula Series replica or excuse the Formula Series vintage cars that run at Watkins Glen or the other vintage series that are out there. These are these are those racers with that technology. Yeah, I would say ninety percent of them cars are the original pieces that they had wow um that they've you know like the car that i sat in when he bought it bob had actually called up doug wolfgang to make sure it was already kept his name on the car and and, and you know it's it's uh, it's it means a lot to some of those people they, they to keep that history well you said going. you know if you could if you could get rid of you get rid of the 2015 pickup trucks that were towing the trailers and get rid of the toter homes behind them it would look like a period picture with all the line yep. up there yep some of those if you could get rid of the modern stuff behind you know in in behind the scenes it would look just look exactly period <laughs> yep even even the driving suits and the helmets and the goggles <laughs> there was a there was a guy down there at williams grove that ran one of the open cockpit cars with a leather helmet goggles yep. and a levi's jacket yep <laughs> and the old bandana around their face like they used to uh, yep it's amazing that, Thankfully, you don't have to worry about breaking teeth if you have a bandana, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just amazing. I mean, I can't I just to sail off turn two and look down that backstretch that goes forever with that red clay and, yeah. you know, the just sailing off into turn three. And there's it, it's not a bank track. It's just it's flat. You just sail in there and, and off you go. Yep. It's the old Pennsylvania red clay. So, I mean, it's it's a lot bitier and stickier than what we're used to up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gonna go down and do it again for the end of the year? I don't know about before the end of the year, but if I ever had a chance, I'd do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How is it that? How is it that this car comes into like? Was this? Did did this get snapped up to be converted into a land speed car, or is it just something? Hey, I uh, I decide I want to own this today. Or Bob's the kind of guy he likes toys and he likes race cars. He's been in in and out of racing for years. He. You know, he got into this land speed stuff, of course, with a sprint car. He loves that sprint car, you know, type type race car. But he, he's also, he's hooked up with, like, uh, you know, Johnny Byraj and, and some of the old Lee Osborne and, and mm -hmm. that clique of sure. of racers. And, and actually, he bought a car that Lee Osborne had built and run. 
Oh, really? So he's, you know, he's got that sitting in the wings that he's going to do something with down the road. But, who, you know, who knows? But it, it's just been quite an honor to be involved with them and get the chance to do some of this stuff. Well, it seems like that, that vintage click uh, had a bit of a split here the last several years where the guys wanted to keep it OEM and then another group of guys wanted to start putting the new bolt-ons on it mm-hmm. and, and keep keep the bodies essentially the same. So they kind of split off. I, I, I'm, I'm a purist about everything. When I watch the Barrett-Jackson auctions, I get real twitchy when they say that <laughs> it's a numbers-matching car, yet they talk about how it's it's 90% donor cars that they found in the junkyard. You know, right. Basically, the only thing that was original was the bumper and the fender tag. Yep. Yep. So the, 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 the more pure and, and true to form it is. It, I, I think there's there's certainly some uh, there's certainly a, an interest there, and I think that there's some almost some responsibility on the on the side of the owners too to keep that tradition there and mm-hmm. keep that history there. Because without it, I mean, without it, once that goes away, it's gone. Yeah, and that that's I think that's one of the things I like about Pennsylvania the most is when you go down there, it's just a different atmosphere around the racetrack because the owners are as important as important or more important than the drivers were. And uh, when they do interviews out in Victory Lane, they interview the owner first, and then they interview the driver. But mm-hmm. um, they've got that Eastern Motorsport Museum down there in Latimer Valley that's just phenomenal. You know, if you ever get a chance to to go through that, we've been down there two or three times, and you walk in, and the first impression is look at all these old guys hanging out. But you sit down there with them, and, and the history and the stories they tell, it's just amazing. Any good stories you picked up this time around? Um, nothing I could say on air, uh, but, uh, you know, they talk about the old Latimer fairground days. I right. mean, a lot of it's fairground racing. It's back when the, there was no guardrails. It was board fence and, <laughs> and that kind of stuff. And there's pictures of guys flying out in the dingweeds and flipping out of the cars. And, oh. and of course there's that whole open cockpit division. That's just amazing that more people weren't killed back then. Right. But, but uh, they've got some pretty neat footage of race cars going one way and people going another and spectators scattering because they're coming through the board fence. And <laughs> it's just, just amazing. That's uh, – I'm not interested in any of that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the race cars on the track. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That open cockpit stuff's crazy. I mean, even now, like like some of the some of the wingless stuff and, and, and the midget series, it's just – just blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and there and there was two or three of them down there that older people that got in these open cockpit cars and they went out and hammered down. I mean, they were they were racing them. That was that yeah. was the you were talking about this couple that they're in their eighties. Yeah, I met this older couple down there, in real beautiful car. It was the Walker Special. It was you know Mister Mrs. Walker, and it, it reminded me a lot of a Sammy Swindell type car i mean it was jet black and it was polished chrome and in the gold leaf lettering and but uh you know the impression i got is that him and her just drove around the country and they got to show off their car and race it when they could and you ran into these guys all the way in from texas yeah yeah (laughs) yeah there was there was a lot of license plates there that we saw tennessee and texas and from and all over the place there was you know over 60 cars total down there and i know you got a long ways to go but your your, your lovely wife who's with us in the studio tonight she's going to help hold your hold your walker when you're doing this <laughs> i hope so <laughs> reach in and tighten my belts <laughs> and help me with my helmet <laughs> yep. yours is going to be a closed cockpit though yeah i'll stay in the case <laughs> yeah yeah the uh uh we, we talked a little bit about the super modified race that uh, Cody Graham won up at Oswego here. We were recapping some of the results. Can you imagine clicking off 50 laps in 15 minutes? No, not at all. You know, that, that's always been on my bucket list, too, is to get in one of those cars. <laughs> and we had looked at it. When we would come off the ESS tour, um, we were trying to stay closer to home instead of do all the traveling. And we'd gone up to Oswego and kind of looked at that and entertained you know, doing one of those until I found out what their tire budget was for the year, and then I'm like, eh, <laughs> we'll, we'll stay away from here. Right. But, uh, yeah, those cars amaze me. They're, That's, they're uh, I talked to Alex Hogue one time. I don't know if you've ever met Alex, mm-hmm. but it, it, Dean is his dad yeah. and Dutch is his grandfather, and, and, and he was talking about driving one of the Supers with the wing on it, the yeah. ISMA series, and at Oswego, when you go down the back stretch, the wing will rock with it. The, the wing will yep. lift up, and it creates such a vacuum, you'll actually feel it tug the helmet. Hmm. tug the helmet on your head yep. which 
<laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not ready for that. I'm not, I'm not growing up enough for that. <laughs> not, not interested at all. Cause that, it just blows my mind. There's talk now that with, with super dirt week's future in, in, in very, very grave straits right now. Um, all signs pointing to this being the last one at the mile. There's some talks now, and Mike and I addressed this last week that maybe Syracuse will go away, which opens the door for Oswego to be covered in dirt and Super Dirt Week to be held there, which I'm sure that you among many would want to find a modified ride for that. That would that would be interesting. <laughs> you know, you know, there's some other places rich, rich in history there, and I mean, um, it makes makes some pretty pretty logical sense. Yeah, I I think if the the city supported it, I don't see why it wouldn't work. I, I think it'd be a huge success. I mean, that would be th- they've run dirt modifieds there in the past, but never mm-hmm. never on dirt. I mean, Bob yeah. McCready had that purpose built dirt modified when they had the asphalt leg of the super dirt car series tour and, and mm-hmm. he just mopped up with everything and these would be dirt modifieds on dirt on the five eights up there in the Swigo. yeah yeah that'd be neat i'd love to see it happen yeah <laughs> put a 305 division out there as part of super dirt week right yep yeah, yeah, we'd go <laughs> <laughs> you've never had a chance to go and and laps your, uh us we go rather i i've never been on pavement I've never, oh, period. Yeah, period. I, I had a chance years and years ago and just didn't do it because they wanted me to buy the whole NASCAR right. license thing, and it just financially wasn't a feasible move. But So I'm thinking that must have been over at Spencer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just kind of stayed away from it. But uh, I, uh, at this, this point in my career, I'm almost willing to wheel anything that I can get my butt in. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it hard to find opportunities at this point? Just because everybody's looking for the next young guy on their way up through? I think so, because they're, they're, there's so much talent out there, um, and these young guys are, are hard to beat. I mean, they get on there and and do a, do a great job. Some of them were born and bred to do some of this stuff. Right. Um, and then you catch an old an old guy like me, it, and that's been something I've had to come to grips this year is that I walk through the pits, and we've been doing this for a long time, and I never thought I would be – in that position right. in my mind i'm still the young guy but my body tells me something different <laughs> so it's been been interesting but, is uh, the is the 305 rough on your body as a whole i mean i, I assume if you put it into the fence it's going to be rough on your body but as a whole to drive it is it is it no i don't think so it's not too bad i mean you have to be in shape um it, it's this kind of a great story with greg hickson and myself because when i first got back into this i hadn't raced for a few years and I would just go like a son of a gun for the first half of the race. And I, actually, I'd be tired out, you know. And I'd come in, and Greg would come over, and he'd, he'd make a comment. And I said something to him one night about, geez, do you think we could go 10 laps, have an intermission, and give me time to take a little nap, and then we'd come back out. <laughs> so Saturday night, that was kind of funny because we had a red flag about halfway through, and Greg come out, and he says, do you need a nap, or can we keep going? <laughs> you know, so we kind of chuckled about it. Well, then when I ended up winning the race, he come over and grabbed the flag out of uh, Scotty's hand, and he says, "I'm going to give it to him this time around." So, uh, ironically, one of the nights where you actually probably could have used a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> given given everything, I mean, a uh, little bit of a little bit of tumult over there at uh, at Canandaigua with with Jeremy Corcoran. Stepping down and and uh, Lori in charge uh, for the balance of the season, um, and and with the sounds of it, there's there's emotions about I don't want it anymore, but I don't want anybody else to have it. There's other people that are interested in running the track, and 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 the fair board is sort of willing to make concessions so that everybody walks away with a with a with an amicable sp- amicable split. Uh, what's the atmosphere over there now? It, you know, unfortunately, it's an atmosphere of uncertainty. You know, and we've said this early in the season that there's other teams out there that either started putting cars together or interested in buying or putting a car together. But now they don't know what they want to do because they don't know if they're going to have a place to run or if they're going to have to travel somewhere to do it. Some of them financially can't do that, especially for the purse we run for. Um, It's like 250 to win and 100 to start. Yeah, so there's not a whole lot of money to be to be made there um i'm hoping that between the fair board and jeremy and and anybody that's involved 
they don't just take themselves you know they don't just think of themselves they think of the whole picture here sure keep the track going um it's only going to do the sport better if the place remains open um you know and hopefully next year we can keep going and, and build on what where we're at right now but I, I don't think there's any writing on the wall that would suggest that Kennedy was going to close not not at this point i don't think that that's i i, 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 I hope not that. you know i've heard things you don't know what this the, the, where the sources are coming from um but i do know for a fact that if the doors were ever closed there it would just make it tremendously hard to get them back open again R- racetracks don't typically come back i can't believe exactly. rolling wheels you know really all all things considered with we had a lot of uninformation there was a lot of mm-hmm. nothing out there so a lot of um a lot of conversations happen yeah. with speculation, so maybe it wasn't as close to becoming yeah. uh, the next Lowe's, Home Depot, apartment complex, whatever. Mm-hmm. But oftentimes, once they're closed, they don't come back. Yeah, yeah. And and I understand Jeremy's point of view. He's had difficulty with some teams, and they've been relentless on trying to drag them down. And he's been relentless on retaliating on them. And then, of course, with the whole Kevin Ward situation, that just – put the stress level right over the edge it's gonna put it it's gonna burn anybody you, out. you know and then when that kind of settled out and the dust cleared you know then a, a, a year later everything stirred back up again so it's you know and i know he's kind of looking at a future at fulton speedway and i hope it works out for him because i, I mean I, I love fulton always have right and if he ever had us up there we'd go up and run and uh, but i canada was in our backyard so if we can keep the gates open there that's probably where we're going to be i i think we talked about this once before but in terms of uh in terms of you talked about those teams that are looking to buy in or they're looking to possibly put a car together or fix something that's been around for a while what's it cost to get into the 305s if you didn't get ridiculous if you could go out and find a good use piece Mm -hmm. um if you didn't get ridiculous yeah (laughs) yeah and and, you know get some reliable parts you could probably put one of these cars together for Twenty to twenty-five thousand, yeah. and have a competitive piece. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like any other division. You know, all it takes is one guy to step up and buy something, and if he dominates a little bit, then everybody else steps up, and it's just a vicious cycle. Toter Holmes, what? I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's just amazing because you walk up into our end of the pits, and and we've got guys with pretty large haulers and and right. and new race cars, and and I'm not going to take myself out of the scenario. We've we've got. A substantial investment ourselves you know in in right now looking at putting a second car together just to have all for 250 bucks you know so it's you gotta love it uh, yeah <laughs> it, it's a disease <laughs> with with that being said um you're looking at putting this you know the second car together and and you're looking at the you're looking at the cost versus the reward on a week-to-week budget though are you better off now running with the sprint cars and, and looking at the roster of drivers you've got, you've got a lot of skilled, talented, and 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 uh, they're not necessarily novice drivers. And mm-hmm. the the new guys are running pretty well too, compared to. And this isn't this isn't intended as a knock on anybody in particular. It's compared to the more rough and tumble style that you're probably in and around when you're driving in the street stocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean we we've got some. There's some talent there that. Yeah, we've got talent on a Saturday night at Canandaigua that can that can match some of these tour race guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and of course, in like Daryl Ruggles, I mean, he's done both this year. I mean, he's run Saturday nights at Canandaigua. He's run 360 tour races, and and he's been fast with them. Mm-hmm. He just hasn't caught the right brakes yet. And it's a different world out there. But uh, you know, we've got some new guys that are coming in that have a lot of talent, and uh, it, it just hopefully down the road and i know this is against all french grimes's aspects of the of the whole 305 race saver series but we're just kind of hoping down the road that somebody will come along and say geez these guys are putting on a heck of a show they're worth a little bit more money right. and if we can start bumping this up and and uh you know making it more financially feasible nobody's looking to make money but we'd like to at least cover the cost of the Sure, because you're yeah. running, you're running yeah. ethanol in it. Yeah, there's methanol. Right. There, you know, shocks are a couple ethanol. hundred bucks a piece. Uh, right rear tires are a couple hundred dollars a piece. You know, if you wreck a wing, that's a thousand dollars, and you know, so it adds up quick. You know, it's you, you have a bad night, and it could cost you a few grand. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it adds up. It adds up fast. <laughs> yeah. At the same time, uh, if if a if a new toy did find its way into the garage, what are you hoping that it might be? Well, I, <laughs> I'm hoping uh, Jeff Cook is one of our sponsor and his sponsors, and he's actually got the twin to the car that we have now. Okay. And I'm hoping that he will get ready to to release that and <laughs> let us purchase it from him. And uh, I think my game plan with that is to have it ready to go and use that car to go out and do some of these these larger 305 shows down in Pennsylvania or wherever. Sure. Yeah, just just use it for that. And Wouldn't be bad to have a spare, right? It's always good to have spare parts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and what's really neat is the, the gang that we have at Canadagua, we've had, especially the last few weeks, we've had a few cars wreck and flip and have issues. And it's almost like the old days. I mean, we go over the trailer, pull the parts out, and get the guy going again. You know, so that's kind of a neat deal. That's good. I mean, you you need to kind of band together, especially yep. with the way that the the division is almost structured, where you have to be willing to do that for one another. Because not everybody there, there's there's going to be a a uh, a wide and diverse gap between the budgets of the top teams and and the mm-hmm. guys that are just showing up, sort yep. of. You know. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you talked about this this all the. Um, this new car, this this modified that showed up. The, the the vintage car was, oh, it, was the, it the vintage car? That's a pr- yeah. sprint car. The the other sprint the other sprint car. The other sprint car. Yeah. So that is there any uh, is there any future for that thing? Is there any plans at all on the table for that one? I don't know, and that's all up to Bob what he wants to do with it. You know, it's, and I'll just go along for the ride, and and uh, we'll we'll knock his bucket list off one <laughs> racetrack at a time, and and uh, you know, but if he gives me the opportunity to go to places that I've never been. And I'm more than willing to do that. Uh, I guess he's been invited to Eldora with it, so that that could be the next. You know, wouldn't be bad to notch off the bucket list. Wouldn't <laughs> be bad to knock Williams Grove and Eldora off, right? <laughs> yeah, Get all in the same that. year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is that car is that car in pretty good pretty good state of repair at this point, or does it need some work? Nope. He Bob keeps things right. Top so he's shape. already got that thing ready to go. Oh yeah, he's he's uh. When we were talking before, I was thinking that this is something he just got his hands on that needs to be gone through still. This thing's already... No, he's, I th- I'm pretty sure it's sitting there in a rolling state right now. <laughs> he's just got to find a power a power plant to put in it, and uh, it will go from there. But uh, no, he he messes around. He goes out in the garage at night and tinkers with things, and and uh, when he's done with it, it's right. You know, And that's that's why I don't hesitate to get in the seat and mash the gas on his, his, his equipment because... It's uh, well, like I say, he's he's hooked up with, you know, Johnny Byrage and in that that bunch there, you know, Lee Osborne, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they don't do nothing, you know, half cocked. Everything is just the way it should be. Yeah. Gotcha. See, when you're talking about some of those names, I was envisioning it was it was a modified, like we were going back in a different direction. No, no, it's just we're we're in sprint car country, you know. We're we're going to do the sprint car stuff. Would you ever go to a modify? Uh, you know, people have asked me that, and I don't know. It would be interesting to do it after being in the sprint cars. You I, have I, a whole lot more reaction time now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it'd be a, everything would just kind of slow down, I think. Uh, so I don't know if I'd enjoy it or not. It, it, when yeah. I look at them, it, they just look like tanks to me now. They're just, <laughs> they're just huge tanks. And, uh, you know, not to say that I wouldn't try it, but, but uh, I – Sprint cars are in my heart, you know, and I, lo- I love the just the, the style of the car, the ease of working on them. does but make it easy cleaning panels. Yeah. A lot different yeah. than it used to be. And, and what's really neat is you look at the times at Canadagua. I mean, the sprint cars are getting around there at 100-plus mile an hour average speed. You know, we're actually putting in better lap times than the modifieds are. Jeez. You know, it's you going you gonna to challenge anybody with a match race? <laughs> It'd be interesting. I don't. I don't know if I'd want to get in the way of one of those cars if I got crossed up in front of them or something. You know. But, uh, so I mean, what? Where? Where to from here? We've talked a little bit about what you want to do, and 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 we're coming to the end of the season. You're gonna you're gonna try and 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 break into Pennsylvania a little bit more. Uh, you're gonna focus focus some of this off season stuff. It seems like the uh, land speed record car is only getting faster and faster. The 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 cooler it gets. Yeah. Um, I don't know what his intentions are with the land speed stuff. I think we're just going to play around with what we got. 
um, there's a, a fellow out in the, the West Coast there, Damien, uh, I can't think of his name now, uh, but he's done 200 plus with a car that they built specifically to go straight, you know, sprint car. It looks like a sprint car. Right. Um, I would like to try to do that, but it takes <laughs> funding to do that. And right. I don't, you know, and I don't know if Bob's willing to, to put that into what we have, cause we're, we're having fun with what we got. How bad do you want that record? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our team, I'd like to do some of the bigger 305 races down south. Um, see if we can leave a, a mark there a little bit, you know. And in the back of my mind, I'd like to go back and try some 360 stuff. I don't know if I'd do a tour, but I'd like to go back and hit, some, hit, of the, hit some of the, the better paying shows, you know, if I had the opportunity. A friend of mine, Bull Lockwood, has, has just taken over Thunder Mountain Speedway in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. that track down there, and they have a 305 division. And he said it has been it has been uh, grabbing at straws. Some weeks they have 12 to 15, sometimes they have 30. Yeah. You just never know. But that's that's the thing that we've seen about Pennsylvania so often is it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with home track points. If somebody gets it gets, gets it in their head, they're going to go someplace else, and they'll bring a couple yep. buddies with them, and they'll all just decide to go show up at this track. And and he had the same thing happen with a, a big money late model race. They got you know seventeen twenty cars. The following week, they were paying half that purse, and, and they and got thirty. And had more. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, he's he's like I don't I don't understand it, but it's uh, neat to see. And and his his three hundred five division's been been strong, and uh, mm-hmm. put it in the back of your mind. Yep. Go see Bo. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad things are going well. Congratulations again on the win. That was outstanding to to, to learn of and yep. figured it was due. It was coming, coming, coming. Yep. Yeah, I like to say I I needed to get it done for the crew and the sponsors, and, and uh, fortunately we were able to pull it off. It gave it gave you plenty of nice new uh, nice new pictures to yeah. update on your Sanders Motorsports Facebook page. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and one of the things that really meant a lot to me is is it it was amazing all the drivers and the the crew members that came down by the end of the night and congratulated me and yeah that's that that kind of means more to me than anything else that, all those guys that all those guys that you remember when they were kids yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well it's funny cuz i this Dave Ferguson parks next to us and quite often we hear the story on I gave him his very first pair of race shoes back when he was like 13 14 years old <laughs> and now i have to go out and chase him down you know, and, and it's it's a job to, to keep up with this kid, you know. But he's got a bright future ahead of him. Yeah. Sounds like it's still fun, though. It's still fun, and I'll do it as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had the crystal ball moment at Williams Grove. Yep. 84-year-old getting strapped in. Yep. Yeah, it was like looking. Hands off the cane. Looking into the yep. future. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. My walker will have Nerf bars on it. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if. I don't know if that bodes well. <laughs> I don't know if you want that. That, that might not be the best. <laughs> Sounds good, but I don't know. Wheelchair can have nerf bars too? That's bad. I hope it never gets <laughs> that bad. If I can't get around. <laughs> Just pour me into the car. That's right. Is there anybody before uh, before we wrap up? We've been here for been here for close to an hour. Hopefully everybody that was hoping to tune in at home got the chance to catch up and, and, and – uh, Watch us banter back and forth for close to an hour now. Is there anybody that we missed or anybody that you want to make specific mention of before we get out of here for tonight? Yeah, we probably should thank uh, Shortsville Napa and Napa Auto Parts, uh, Wix Filter and Carlisle Tool, that whole Napa program together. They Probably should. Yeah, they probably <laughs> should thank them. They're, they're a real big part. Um, we got PJ's Lawn Care. Uh, they come on board a couple years ago, and it's just been super to have them involved. And they're there every week, and if we need something, they're they're there. Uh, AEY Enterprises out of Macedon. He's he's been great with us and Cook's Contracting. Of course, he helps me out with some of the equipment. Sure. Uh, Jeff and Lori Cook, um, longtime friends. Think the world of them, you know. Uh, but we got JD Repair, um, Nana's Restaurant. She's feeds us whenever we get you know when we <laughs> run out of money because we're spending on the parts. She, she sends me dinner home. You know, I can't beat that. But uh, gotta thank all of them for. You having the you having the uh, race party again this winter? My wife would rather not, but I think we have to. You know, it's it's a oh, lot of oh no, it's, it's it's a lot of work, <laughs> and she has 
the majority of the load. Right. But it's such a good time, and it it does mean a lot to me, and it does mean a lot to the fans, and and uh, I'm pretty sure we'll have it. You want to know uh, something funny about your race party? As I was talking at dinner tonight with with my wife and saying that Lee was going to be there, and and my boy turns and points up to the picture on the wall because <laughs> we've got the the picture that you sent him from the party last year, and uh, that Lee, and I said, yeah, that that Lee, is he going to have a sprint car there? I said, no, he's not bringing his car to the show. But he <laughs> goes, well, when can we go see the sprint car again? Because I want to go do that again. So, I mean, we'll uh, we'll definitely be happy to be there. <laughs> sure, sure. You guys are welcome over at the shop anytime. You can bring him out, and we'll, we'll stick a wrench in his hand. But uh, I, I'm hoping that if we have the party this year, we're going to have, of course, our car that we run weekly here at Canadago. But I want to have the land speed car back and the Wolfgang car there. So oh, that I, would I, be cool. I want to have everything that I drove for the year now there. Will, uh, now, will all of that fit in, this, fit in one toner home? Um, I don't know. It depends if I could talk my wife into letting me get one. <laughs> so, but, uh, we'll get them there one way or another. <laughs> what are you use, just using a, a, a short and close now? Um, actually, oh, there's a funny story too. Or is it a monster? Um, a year ago, I bought a trailer that belonged to Richard Petty. It's a you know, go a, on a, a forty foot gooseneck. And uh, for a year, I actually I got it through uh, Chucky Hebing up to Cobra Motorhome. He found it, brought it back up for me, and we we bought it and used that. But it had this big Richard Petty logo thing on the side. Sure. And we ran around a year with that on. And actually, I was parked just up from Tony Stewart the night that all that went on with okay. Ward. A lot of pictures were taken. And uh, it had gotten back down to the petties that the trailer was there, and there's the logo. And so they had called up, and they said, geez, there never was a deal to get that off the trailer, but they'd appreciate it if it was taken off or covered up because they didn't want to get into any bad press and oh, be involved. And sure. And I had said, yeah, sure, we can get that done. Well, it took me a little while to get my graphics guy, you know, geared up to, it was quite a big, big deal. And uh, this year I called, uh, Sticker Bomb does our graphics and stuff on the car. And I called him up and I said, Zach, we got to get this covered up. I said, they're coming back to Watkins and I'm sure somebody's going to be at the racetrack. You know, that never fails. He's no problem. Bring it down. So I took it over to his place on a Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm driving down 96 into Farmington, and I see this big hauler parked at the hotel. And I'm thinking, God, that's a pretty neat piece, you know. And I slow down, and I look. Well, it's the petty guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. the, And they're all standing there getting ready to go to Watkins Glen, you know, and they, and they see the trailer go by. <laughs> so I didn't get any phone calls, but we got it covered up. And Was it hard and, to cover that up? Man, it was quite a job. I mean, kill, it's, it's I mean, not the not not the physical part of covering the thing up. It would kill me to have to put a decal over a, a Richard Petty logo on I the side of my trailer. I know it's. I thought it was kind of neat just to own something that Richard Petty had owned, but uh, you know, we got the big Napa Racing logo and stuff over it now. So, and you still uh, have it? We still have it. Yep, yep. And I, I would like to buy a toter home type truck to put on the front of that if I could find one reasonable and. You know, and then we're, then we're pretty set. We could travel up and down the East Coast here. and Wherever you got to go. It'd be pretty comfortable. You'd be set. Yep. Take summers off. Yep. Life would be golden. <laughs> I don't know if your entire crew in the room with us is agreeing. <laughs> 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 I keep telling her if I could find her just one more good job, she, just could, one get, <laughs> you know, she could send the checks. So is there, I mean, what tracks, you, you talked about going up and down the East Coast. I know there's three or five races all over the place, and, and, and we've talked before about how you've had the opportunity to run a number of different places, mm-hmm. is, and, and now you've been able to knock Williams Grove off the list, and, and there's even potential now that you're going to get to turn laps in Eldora. In terms of racing, specifically the 305, and they've got their series down down south, as we talked to it about with French Grimes, and, and there's a couple big races in Pennsylvania. Where is there any place that you really, really, I mean, we've kicked the bucket list term around a lot of times. Is there any place that you really want to get the chance to race at, be it a 305, a 360, a 410, a, a street stock, whatever? You know, nothing that, I'd like to go back to Pennsylvania. I like that Williams Grove atmosphere. I like Sealings Grove. Port Royal is pretty cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um I've never been to Silver Springs, so that'd be a place I'd like to go to. Um, of course, the Eldora, we'll see, we'll see how that works out. I've been there, but we've never raced there. Right. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of places out there. Once you get out, you know, they'll, you know, they say you ought to go there and you ought to try it. 
Um, Ashwigan does that weekend 360 yep. thing. Sure Never do. been there. I heard that was a, a really neat facility. Um, would like to have a chance at that. Um, that's a that, that's an incredible place. Yeah, yeah, that's quite the joint. Mike's yeah. Mike's told me a lot about it. I haven't I haven't had a chance to get up there, but the mm -hmm. the, the improvements that have been done up there are are remarkable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is there? It's uh, that's surprising. Where where how about, how about Bob? Where does he want to go? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He <laughs> j he just lets me know what I need to know, and he'll call me up and say, "You want to go?" And I'm sure we'll go. <laughs> that's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you guys were able to make the trip in. I mean, that's uh, it's always great catching up with you. And mm -hmm. and uh, again, the the win was was well earned. And Thanks. hopefully, hopefully, this is a sign of things to come as we work through the off season here. More to come. I don't know if we can do it, but I'd like to pull another one off for the end of the season. Well, you got two more shots at it, right? Yeah. Two more shots, regular points tonight coming up this weekend, and then double points uh, coming up on what's going to serve as Labor Day weekend already. Yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. September right around the corner. Mm. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> School's got to start. we got to start. I've got to be at the school tomorrow. We're going to be over there, over at Mid Lakes, and off we go right back into the regular swing. And then Monday and Tuesday this week, I'm down in Virginia for a two-day show down there in Woodstock. And uh -huh. then coming up next weekend, we got to go to Stoneboro uh, down in Pennsylvania. But, man, it's... Yep. So you got a few miles under you. Oh, we've been to Minnesota three times this year already. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, it's been, been a busy, busy, busy summer. But uh, it's all wrapping up. Best of luck to you Thank here you. this weekend. And uh, that's going to do it for episode number 171 as we are screaming towards the... I believe it's already the fourth anniversary of the 31st lap as uh, as uh, we got started there the week after Super Dirt Week when Stu Friesen won his first one. Number 171 is in the books. Hopefully we'll be able to catch up with Mike next week. Wish you the best in your football draft there, sir. Uh, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>